What's up, everybody? How we doing? Episode 53. We're here, and I'm ready to go. I'm in a good mood today, um, for no particular reason, really. I just, I got into podcast mode. So Tuesdays, all right, Tuesdays, I know, it's when I usually record my episodes, right? So I know Tuesdays, I got to get in podcast mode. I feel like I've maybe talked about this before on the show. Tuesdays, I know I got to get in podcast mode. So I, 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 I try to get into that Lucy Goose feeling a few hours before the show starts, and that way when I get home from work, I give myself a half hour just to just to get everything ready, and then we're on by like 6 o'clock at night. I'm recording. It's 6.04 right now. We're recording. We're getting ready to go, and then boom, 6 o'clock hits, around 6 o'clock hits usually. I aim to be in podcast mode. Now, I, for some reason, got in podcast mode at like I don't know, 3 o'clock this afternoon, so I've been going off the walls, and I've been ready to rock and roll, so let's get this, let's get this ship rolling, no, let's get this ship sailing, let's get this party started. My name's Connor Gilbert, thank you for tuning in to episode 53 of Who Gives a Dram, um, for those who are new listeners, thank you for tuning in, for those who are relis- uh, returning listeners, appreciate you. appreciate you. Um, best way to support the show? Head on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, Breaker, Overcast, wherever you're listening. Throw me a subscribe. Uh, go on YouTube, like and subscribe. My, uh, like my videos and subscribe on YouTube as well. Leave a comment on my videos and leave a rating and review on iTunes. It's the best way you can help me. Um, so do that. And also, my podcast is brought to you by The Grapevine Media, www.thegrapevinemedia.com. Uh, go into the link in my bio on Instagram. You can check us out over there. Um, great stuff. Great stuff. So, um, that's it for business this week. A little bit of business before we get into the review. Um, again, I say this every week. Got a lot to talk about this week. Um, a lot of things have happened in the past week. I just started sweating because I got so excited to, to do this podcast. I'm wearing my straight, my straight up Irish shit wool coat because um, I don't have the heat on in my studio right now. So I thought I might be a little chilly, but I'm sweating. Because I'm excited. And you guys should be excited too. We're going to drink some bourbon today. Um, last week we did a little scotch. And I debated maybe doing another scotch this week. But you know what? No, I want to do bourbon. It's fireplace season. It's fire pit season. It's getting to the point where you're having a fire to stay cold. I mean, I'm sorry. That was a dumb as shit thing to say. You're having a fire to stay warm. And that's the whole point of having a fire now. It's not like in the summer when you have bonfires. Um, and the reason is just to hang out and to have that fire. Now you need fires to stay warm. So the best way to also stay warm while, while, while by the fire is to have a high proof whiskey in your hand. So that's what we're doing this week. This week we are doing Elijah Craig barrel proof, a one nineteen, um, a bottle. I was so lucky to get my friend Ron at Wyoming package store, um, had a bottle for me, had it waiting for me. And uh, that guy, that guy's the best. So thank you, Ron, if you're listening to this. Appreciate you. Um, and if you're in the area, Wyoming Package Store is where you should buy all your stuff. I don't know why. If you live anywhere in the vicinity of south- southeastern Connecticut, Rhode Island, and you're not going to Wyoming Package Store off of Route 3 on 95, what you doing? Um, but thanks, Ron. Uh, this I'm excited. I've, I'm excited to review this. This is... As you guys know, if you've been following along with Who Gives a Dram, you know that I love me not only some Barrel Proof whiskey, but I love me some Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And when I keep finding the different releases, I get excited. I get like, I do a little happy dance. You know when chicks eat food and they do a little happy dance? Like, like It's like a thing that they do. They say, oh, I'm, I'm so mad until you give me food. And then they start doing a little happy dance because they think it's cute when it's actually annoying. Um... That's me when I see an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof batch on the shelf, and it's not one that I already have. I do a little happy dance. I do a little Irish jig while I'm wearing my 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 Irish wool sweater from uh, pretty sure this is from Lucky Brand. Um, <clears throat> but that's what we're doing today. We're doing a little Barrel Proof. I'll pour some in the glass right now. Solid cork pop. Um, did have a little pregame pour today. Drank a little Wild Turkey 101 before we started the show here, just to get my 
my mouth wet, just to get my, my mouth wet, M apostrophe mouth wet, my mouth wet. Um, but yeah, man, yeah, we're here, we're ready to do this, um, and I got some things I want to talk about. <clears throat> so like I said, I'm recording this on Tuesday, it's 6 o'clock, it's 6.09 now, five minutes into the podcast, and I am not recording in enough time to react to the Spider-Man No Way Home second trailer. Supposedly, it's coming out at 8.30 tonight, so I, I, I'm, I'm not in time to do that, uh, to release this episode, um, to have a fresh review on that. So we'll talk about that next week, or maybe I'll maybe I'll talk about it before then, but um, I hope it's cool. I'm pretty sure we're going to see um, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin. Here are my Here's my predictions. And everyone will already know this because the trailer will most likely be out by the time I release this at um, midnight Eastern Standard Time tonight or this morning. Um, We'll definitely see Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin because he's in both of the posters that they've released since then. We'll definitely see probably most of the villains. And I guarantee, well, I bet there's some sort of hint of either Matt Murdock... um, or Charlie Charlie Cox's Daredevil, or the two other Spider-Men, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. I'm still not totally convinced the two other Spider-Men are going to be in the movie, um, but the closer we get and the more speculation I see online, at this point you gotta you gotta you gotta have them in the movie. You know, you gotta have them in the movie at this point. So those are my predictions. Definitely gonna see Willem Dafoe Green Goblin. Definitely gonna see. Definitely gonna see Jamie Foxx's Electro. Probably going to see Sandman and Lizard. For sure going to see Doc Ock again. And um, uh, and the outlier is probably going to see either Charlie Cox's Daredevil or a hint of two the two more Spider-Men. Um, but there is one thing I did see that I can review quickly on the podcast here. I did go see Eternals, like I said I would. I saw it last Wednesday, and I have some opinions on it. My first opinion is... Too many people in the movie, all right? When, I will say there's going to be spoilers in this, so if you don't want to hear spoilers, don't listen. When you have a team-up movie, you need to know who the people are before they team up. Otherwise, you spend half the movie wondering whose name is who when they when they reference someone that's not in the room. And they say, hey, Gilgamesh over there, or Gilgamesh did this. It's like, who the hell is Gilgamesh? There's seven other people that aren't in the room right now. Who are you talking about? Um, and that was my first problem with Eternals, that I understand the concept of bringing all of them together and just doing a team-up movie right off the bat, but there should have been some type of hint or something, I feel like, before before they release an, uh, a two-and-a-half-hour movie about them, because half the time I was wondering who was who. Um, I have the names of all the main characters here. We have Icarus, Circe, Ajax, Druig, Gilgamesh, Sprite, Kingo, Macri, Fastos, and Karun. It's too many people. Um, There's another person here that I have written down. There's actually two more people that I have that are in it that we'll talk about in a second. And there's also Dane Whitman, um, who is Kit Harington. Um, But overall... I think the movie doesn't deserve the hate that it's getting from the critics. However, I understand where they're coming from. The movie, in parts, was way too slow. Way too slow in some parts of the movie. Way too many monologues and just scenes that just didn't need to be in there. I did not need to see uh, Icarus and Cersei banging. Did not need to see that. Was I completely mad at it? No. Was I completely mad about seeing seeing Icarus's ripped up back in a lovemaking scene? No. <laughs> I love how, you know, as a straight guy, I feel like straight guys, they they have no problem saying another guy is handsome. And maybe that's just like you you know who you are. And you're comfortable with expressing that? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is this. I'm straight, and I I will be the first one to say that guy's handsome. For example, example number one, 
Henry Cavill is the most handsome man on the planet, and you will not convince me otherwise. I would date Henry Cavill. <laughs> I would. I feel like it'd be nice just to like talk to him when he's looking at you and he's concerned about you. Like if me and Henry Cable fell in love and he's just looking at me and he's concerned about my feelings and that handsome the shit face is just looking back at me. I mean, I, I don't want to say I'd kiss him or nothing because I'm straight, but I wouldn't mind like waking up next to him. I feel like it'd be nice. <laughs> I'm just being real, you guys. That's what I think of because Icarus, or um, I forgot what the actor's name was, Rob Stark, he's handsome in this movie. He's handsome as all get out, and I'll be the first one to say that. Um, But, like, there are just so many monologue scenes in this movie that didn't need to be there, so many deep moments that just didn't need to be there, and I feel like that's just the MCU's way of kind of changing things up a bit. Um, I don't understand where the backlash is coming of the LGBTQ thing. I didn't see anything. There was there's a gay couple in there, Fastos, who's the um, the eternal who can who can make inventions with his hands. Um, he has a husband and a son with his husband, but what's so they have a gay representation there? But I didn't see like LGBTQ. Like I didn't see the rest of them. Um, and we've seen gay people, I mean, there's so many gay people in so many movies, so what's the problem with this one, just because it's a superhero movie? But they've already said Loki's bisexual, and no one seemed to really care about that, seeing as how many viewers Loki got, um, and I feel like there's been other gay characters in the MCU already, I don't know what the problem was, um, I like to think that people aren't that evil, where because it's a black gay guy that they would lash out to it. But maybe that's just how messed up we are as a country. I like to think that's not the reason, but who knows? There are some crazy people, crazy people out there. Um, and Fastos was actually one of my favorite characters. He was, I mean, top five character in the movie, without a doubt. Um, so he's, yeah, he's the guy who can make, like, inventions with his hand, and he... And and Icarus was looking handsome as shit. Um, Angel Angelina Jolie played. Uh, who did she play? Oh, I didn't even write down her name. I knew I was forgetting someone. She played Athena. She was looking good. Um, Cersei was the Asian Asian girl. Ajax was um, Salma Hayek. Again, looking looking very good. Um, who else is there? Cersei, Ajax, Druig was like the um, he's like the Irish guy, and he controls people's minds. He has that's his power. Gilgamesh is the Asian guy who looks exactly like a he like, he's, looks like a buff Wong, Wong the guy from Doctor Strange. Um, Sprite is the little kid. Kingo is uh the uh, Indian actor there that got jacked as shit for this role, and he was he was pretty good. He's probably my least favorite character though. Um, and Macri is the deaf girl who's really fast. And Karun, or what I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, is um he was uh <laughs> Kingo's um personal photographer because Kingo is like a Bolly like the biggest Bollywood star of all time. So this guy was like comedic relief in in in, in essence. Um and without really like going into what the movie was about, essentially like, the Eternals, they find out they're not real people. They're synthetic beings that are, were created by the Celestials to make sure uh, the human race didn't destroy themselves or something before they re reached their maximum potential, in which case, in Earth, in every planet, a Celestial is being housed, and when the planet reaches, reaches its maxim maximum potential the celestial can be born and it essentially results in a in a in a planet wide like it blows up the planet you know birthing the celestial but then the celestial creates a whole nother universe and there's billions and trillions more people created um so it's just a vicious cycle like that and the eternals are there to protect the human race from the deviants and to make sure basically things go well and to help guide them along in ways so that they can they can strive 
um, to be the best that they can be. And then once it hits that mark, everybody dies. And the Eternals didn't know this. And then um, Ajax, who's Salma Hayek, tells Icarus, who's handsome, the plan. And uh, Icarus feels like they need to go through with it because it's what the Celestials want. But everyone else is like, no, we can't let this happen. Uh, we can't, you know, these people are, are more than they, they are. They are they are different and we care for them and we love them. So there's a big fight at the end between Icarus and the rest of the Eternals. And essentially at the end, Icarus teams up with everyone and they essentially become one mind, become one mind. And that's how they become strong enough to essentially freeze the celestial while he's being born and kill him and that's the end of the movie that's a very 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 short summary of a two and a half hour long movie um but that's what happened and the press the essence of the movie was good um there was definitely some good action. It was not a top tier Marvel movie by any mean, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it was solid for what it was trying to do, and I appreciated that. It was cool to see these new characters introduced. It was cool to see someone like Superman esque flying and shooting, you know, heat vision out of their eyes, and seeing, you know, Angelina Jolie's character just forming weapons from her mind, and that was like the way they did everything was super cool. The way they they showed the scope of how large the, the celestials were was crazy as well and they did they blew they blew that out of the park and um yeah i i, I give the movie like a probably like a seven and a half maybe a maybe like a 7.3 like it wasn't it was okay i'm gonna watch it again um and i i feel like i need to watch it again to maybe appreciate it more but yeah, like a seven point three out of ten probably is what I get Eternals, and then um, the post credit scene is uh, no context. Uh, Eros shows up, Star Fox, and I think his name's Eros, A R O S. I know his name's Star Fox. It's essentially it's it's Thanos's brother, and he's played by Harry Styles. And he comes in, and he knows where the celestial, where the celestials took half of the Eternals, because half of them get taken at the end of the movie by a celestial. And then at the very, very end, Dane Whitman, who's Black Knight, um, played by Kit Harrington, he's going to essentially grab his the sword that turns him into the Black Knight, and turns him into like one of the most powerful people in existence. Um, and there's a voice in the background and you don't see who it is but you hear the voice saying you sure you want to do that mr whitman or you sure you want to do that dane and it's confirmed that it was uh marshall ali's blade so they're introducing blade into the mcu now just a lot of different new characters introduced a lot of a lot of different storylines a lot of things happening and I was here for it. I was I was I was down with it. I liked it. Seven point three out of ten for me. Is it who gives a dram scale? Um, for the Eternals. I I'm almost positive that Spider Man No Way Home will be way better. But I know and I, I I was a little disappointed. I thought they would do a little bit better of a job with Eternals, but I mean for what it was, it wasn't bad. It really wasn't bad. Definitely doesn't deserve all the hate that the that the critics were giving it, that's for sure. Um, and just to stay on the MCU, on the MCU train, I can't, uh, I can't even begin to explain how crazy it is that, um, that the Spider-Man trailers are getting this much hype and that there's this much like hype behind trailers for Spider-Man. I know Spider-Man's popular, but there's, there wasn't even this much hype, but you know, in, in anticipation of Infinity War and Endgame. Maybe it's because we we know we're introducing so many new characters now that we've never seen, but uh, still, I can't believe the hype f- uh, with the Spider-Man trailers. Insane. That being said, I'm going to be sitting at the edge of my seat at 8.30 tonight, and I can't wait to watch that trailer. <laughs> so they got me, hook, line, and sinker, the MCU does. I will spend all my money to see all their movies, and I'm happy to do that. 
Um, I want to get into kind of what, what I'm smelling here. Um, Elijah Craig, Barrel Proof A119. I don't really need to. I mean, if you want to know the history between between or uh, with Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, just go watch one of like the other five videos I've done on Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Um, there's not really much to it. It's a it's a it's a mix of 12 year old bourbons that Elijah Craig barrels or bottles at Barrel Proof. Uh, each batch is a different proof, and each batch, at least that I've had, is delicious. This batch specifically, this is even their old barrel. So this, I mean, this is their old bottle. So the old bottles, they looked exactly like the Elijah Craig small batch bottles, except they had a sticker at the bottom that read barrel proof. Now they say Elijah Craig barrel proof right on the on the face of the bottle. But you can see it there. I'll hold it up on video. Hopefully you can see it. You can see what I'm talking about. It's their old bottle. Um which I think is cool. It's kind of cool to add to the collection. Um, here, for a reference, if you're watching the YouTube video, I have my B521, which we've already done here. There's the A119. You can see it says small batch right there. And here is the B521. You can see it says barrel proof right there. Same sticker, but one says barrel proof, one says small batch. And the stickers are a little bit different too. Um, just a small little, cool little thing that Elijah Craig did. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, we're looking at 135.2 proof, 67.6 ABV on this bad boy. Um, again, one, like I said, it's 12-year-old, um, it's a blend of 12-year-old bourbons, uh, bottled that barrel proof. This is going to be hot, this is going to be, like, this is going to be, I haven't had a this high of a, of a whiskey, excuse me, in a while, so... Not sure I'm going to react to it. On the nose, though, I'm not getting, like, a whole lot of complexity. It's definitely oaky. Um, and I get, like, a uh, like a cherry note on it. Definitely some cherry, a little bit, like, caramel. It doesn't, it doesn't, the nose doesn't reflect how high of a proof it is, that's for sure. This is going to be dangerous once once I take a sip here in a second. But yeah, it's, it, you get a little bit of the alcohol vapors, not a whole lot. Give it a little swirly poo here in the snoot glass. Uh, again, if you want some of these, gla some of this glassware that I'm, that I'm sipping my whiskey out of, this beautiful tumbler right here, www.snootglass.com. Promo code WG, WGAD20 for 20% off your entire order. You can get these cool glasses right here. Yeah, lots of oak. Um, and then I get like a cherry. Yeah, there's definitely a cherry on there. Pretty hot, pretty hard cherry too. I wonder what I had. I had the mash bill. I gotta pull up the mash bill real quick. That's gonna bother me. Seventy-five percent corn, thirteen percent rye, twelve percent malted barley. So a little bit of a high rye content. I don't get a, as much of a rye spice though. You could definitely like tell it's it's a higher corn content. I mean, it's it's got like that dusty corn wheat, not wheat, but like a like a like a open field type of smell to it like dusty cracked corn i know i've 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 known some other whiskeys like that in the past and i've gotten like dusty bags of of cracked corn and unless you've like carried a dusty bag of cracked corn it's a different smell it's it's hard to like to to like uh cr accurately say what that smells like but mostly like oak um, some like darker sweet notes like caramel, maybe a little butterscotch. Um, cherry is is prevalent on here. Like I said, 75% corn, 13% rye, 12% malted barley. Um, yeah, it's that's really all I'm getting on this. It's it's big on oak, it's big on cherry. I get a little bit of like a caramel butterscotch presence to it, but the biggest thing is it it's surprisingly light for 135 proof whiskey um 
So without further ado, why don't we just get right into it? We're 25 minutes into the podcast here. Let's get right into it. Let's drink some whiskey. Cheers, you guys, to another week of Who Gives a Dram, episode 53. Elijah Craig, Barrel Proof, A119. Let's do this. That's hot. Ooh, that's tasty, though. Mmm, doing my little happy dance. Um... Yeah, that's good shit, bro. Oh, that's sitting in my chest. Oh, doing like I got, mm-hmm. you know, Wolf of Wall Street, Matthew McConaughey. For those of you who didn't know this, in that movie, oh Jesus, this is staying with me. This, this, this poor that sip is just staying in the back of my throat. Matthew McConaughey in that movie. That was what he did to get ready for scenes and kind of like get his psyche set and get his mind in the right place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And either DiCaprio or Scorsese said, do that in the scene. So they correlated, they they translated that pre-shoot ritual into the actual scene. And now it's like so famous. Everybody does it. Um, I thought it was really cool. Matthew McConaughey is one of, the best actors alive. <clears throat> Put him next to Leo DiCaprio, who is probably the best act, the best working actor alive, um, at least top five. I want to do a movie episode one of these days where like we break down maybe like I've done it on my other podcast, but maybe like my five favorite movies. Maybe like we have Whiskey Morgue back on here. We do five best horror movies of all time, or maybe uh, I have someone else on here. We'll just do have like a movie podcast. That would be pretty cool, and then have like a whiskey for each movie. That would be pretty sweet. Um, but on the, I gotta take another sip. Mm. Oh, it's very like, it's very like thin. It's not very viscous. It's not very thick. It's oily. Oh man. It's tough to get past that proof right now. The just the heat is is dominating every part of this of this experience right now. Yeah, I feel like I've actually started to eat like a hot pepper or something. Um, but it's there's no pepper in this in this sip. It's it's like getting past the heat. There's a there's a abundance of like vanilla caramel sweetness on there um oak is still present i'm getting like a <clears throat> like a leather as well and i've never eaten leather but when i say leather i mean like how leather smells and we've talked about this before on the podcast if you smell something you, you know how it tastes let's be real if you if you smell something you can correlate that to a taste um I'm pretty sure there's like scientific reasons behind that, like the olfactory system in, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Someone smell burnt toast. <laughs> That's what happens when like you you have a stroke or something, you start smelling burnt toast. And this is, this is like, this almost, this almost tastes burnt. There's a lot of heat on this. Mm. God, this is not something. If you're listening to this and you have never had a barrel-proof whiskey before and you're at my house, I will not be serving this to you because this will turn you off from whiskey forever. This is maybe other than the old Forester single barrel barrel-proof that we did on um, Whiskey with Kin number three. This might be the hottest whiskey I've had on the podcast. This just dominates throughout the entire palette. Like even the finish is just like like hot tamale, cinnamon, like tobacco, leather. I get a lot of leather on the on the palette as well. It's a very dark it's actually not a very dark, dark pour. This is like it's a mix between the two. It's got that heat on it, but at the same time, like What I'm getting is 
there's a lot of like nice light notes in there as well but they're just so amplified by the by the by the barrel proof aspect of this whiskey that it's almost a bit like <clears throat> it almost overtakes everything now i'm gonna take one more sip without water and then i'm gonna add a tad bit of water in here and i want to see how it affects it if you can hear background noise i'm sorry there's a jujitsu class going downstairs i can't get mad at them they're little kids they're learning self-defense it is what it is. Yeah. The the heat is just overly present on here. I got actually a little bit of like of a of a dry rye spice on that last sip, but I would say the 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 spice the heat is more of, of the proof than an actual spiciness but like there's rye and cinnamon sprinkled in there but there is a nice vanilla that's very very prevalent on um elijah craig pours i'm not getting really any type of fruitiness on there so what's translated from the nose is not translating to um the palate in terms of that fruit fruity note that cherry but that vanilla that caramel that is translating over to the palate and then i'm getting like a bit more of like a like leather tobacco ish type of thing so i'm going to get a little bit of water in here right now and while i talk about that i want to talk about a podcast that i did this week or while i do this i want to talk about a podcast i did this week I'll let that sit um so I'm sure you guys know I've talked about the Bourbon with Friends podcast on the show before. Um, good friends of mine over there. Um, Paul hit me up, asked if I wanted to co-host with him um, last night. So I think next week we're going to release an episode. It's me, Paul, and um, uh, who was it? How Paige. Paige. I want to. I just want to make sure I know what her Instagram handle is. This lady that we uh, that we interviewed, Biker Biddy, that's who it is. Biker Biddy. Um, Paige Mills, yeah, at Biker Biddy on Instagram. So I was I was lucky enough to ge- be invited to co-host with Paul on the Bourbon with Friends podcast, one of the largest whiskey podcasts in the world, and we interviewed Paige, you know, aka Biker Biddy. And I was very, very honored to do that. And that was very nice of Paul to invite me on as a co-host. And um, hopefully that's something that maybe like me and him do a little bit more moving forward, you know. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I had a, I had a lot of fun. And I'm sure you guys who listen to this have, uh, you've at least heard of Bourbon with Friends. If not, you've probably listened to them. They're all, th- all three of them. Even I think her name's Stacy, the new girl who does it. They're all great, and they all have great chemistry. Um, and it's just a great podcast. And I was very, very, you know, um, honored to join them and to co-host and talk to Paige, who's just a hilarious girl out of Australia who does like powerlifting content and like comedic content and motorcycle content. And she's she's just she's like in, she's like what she's like an Instagram famous like model. But she's like cool as shit, you know what I mean? Like, and a lot of girls will say like, if they're Instagram famous because they're like good looking, they're like, oh, I'm I'm different because I'm like, I like to do this. I like like comic books or I like motorcycle or something like that. And they're just like shallow people and they're using that aspect of their personality to think they're different. Paige is actually cool as shit, and I was it was awesome to get to talk to her. Um, and to get to know her and we talk about some whiskey. We got we drank a lot of whiskey and it was a great episode. So I think they're releasing that next week. Um, I will blast it out on my channels as well on my Instagram and stuff once it's released. But go check it out over there. If you're not following Bourbon with Friends at uh, I think it's BWF Podcast, go follow them as well. They're like I said, just some very, very good friends of mine over there. I'm lucky to call them my friends and they have a very successful podcast and that's well deserved because they work their asses off. Um, and thank you for having me on. That was a great, um, a great treat. And I really enjoyed doing that. Um, and we, I hope to do it again. Um, that was fun. Yeah, that was, that was super fun. I loved, I loved doing that. 
it's fun just to get to meet, be able to meet these new people. Like I never would have met this girl if it wasn't for the podcast. Um, I never would have met any of the people that I've grown close with. The guys with Bourbon Friends, Daryl, a.k.a. Whiskey Sith, Mike, a.k.a. Whiskey Morg, um, Chris Walters at Knows Your Bourbon, Karthik and Matt at uh, Phenomenal Spirit. Like, all these people that I consider, like, at least I'm, uh, some of them I consider, cl- you know, close friends for, like, online. And some of them I just consider, like, acquaintances that I'm lucky enough to be friendly with. It's just... It's the best part about doing this besides like being able to produce content. This is my church. I come here for like 35 to 45 or 50 minutes every week. This is what I do. This is my church. This is how I get the steam of the week out there um, because a bunch of you guys think it's entertaining and you like listen to me spew about bullshit and drink whiskey. That's exactly what this show is. With water. I've given it the swirly poo. Nose doesn't really change a whole lot. Not a lot happen. Not a lot changing in the nose. Mm, a little bit less subtle. I mean, a little bit more subtle. Not much changing though. Ooh, that I'm getting a bit more of that fruity note now that the the water has been added. You can tell the proof is as has toned down a little bit. Mm, I might like that a little bit better. I don't know if I really like these close to hazmat or hazmat proofed bourbons. I think, like I said, 100 to 120, I think is my wheelhouse. I think that's what I like the most. Um, 120 and above, I, listen, I, I, I enjoy them and they're some of the most flavorful pours out there, but Sometimes that heat, like I'm, my nose is actually runny right now because it's so, like this is so hot and so, it's, it's such a high alcohol volume on this that sometimes that kind of overtakes a little bit. And that's not a bad thing and that might just be me too. But this with a little bit of water, yeah, it's still, I mean, this is so hot that even with water, it's still hot, but tone down a little bit. It is not really a huge difference. It is the proof is toned down a little bit, and I'm getting more of like a of that cherry and vanilla and caramel. Though, but almost like the flavors are a bit more pronounced, and the spice is kind of taking a back seat. But nothing totally different um, in terms of water compared to no water. Um, I might like it a little bit better with water though. Um, so let's give this thing a rating. Let me make sure I hit everything on my list. Eternals, Spider-Man. Oh, so apparently Buffalo Trace announced that they're getting rid of the Stag Jr. label and they're just making Stag. So it's going to be George T. Stag as an antique collection release every year and then a Stag. So the Stag Jr. is out of it. Not the biggest fan of that. I liked the Stag Jr. I think it was very marketable. I think it made the George T. Stag a bit more prestigious and that's like... You know, there's little Stag Jr. over here. Then there's the big, there's the big boy, George T. And George T. is always one of the most loved antique collection releases of the year. So that there's the fact that they're going from George T. Stag to Stag, I just think it kind of loses a little bit of a, a little bit of like the what's the word I'm looking for? Like the the mystery behind Stag Jr. I guess like. At least around me. Like, I've never seen a Stag Jr. sitting on the shelf just walking into a store. I'm sure 90% of the people listening to this have, have been the same. And that's still going to change. That's probably only going to be amplified now that there's a new bottle. And people, you know, collectors want to get want to get the old bottles because they're, they're not going to say Stag Jr. anymore. They're going to want to get the new bottles because it says Stag. So I'm sure we're not even, we're, it's going to be even harder to find now. But I remember reading that article and reading, like, my Instagram account's uh, post that and everything and you know Twitter accounts I follow tweet it and I'm like that it doesn't do much for me I don't, I don't know why they're doing that I, Stag Jr. it's I, I guess maybe because it's their more popular like they it's their more widely available release that um, they kind of want it I guess maybe the junior moniker 
maybe devalued it a little bit, but I think any whiskey fan would know that. Like, who's going to a store to buy Stag Junior and who doesn't love whiskey? You know what I mean? Nobody, because you can't find it. And so those who are buying Stag Junior know whiskey, they know bourbon, they know the quality that Stag Jr. produces and that Buffalo Trace Distillery produces. So to me, it's kind of like a a gimmicky, like, you know, we're just doing this because it's something different and it might even have something to do with the No George T. Stag coming out this year. Um, Who knows what's happening? I think Buffalo Trace is, is just creating their own supply and demand. I think they're holding off on George T. this year so they can release it next year and it can be like double the cost. That's my theory, because uh, there's no chance that that Buffalo Trace is creating a subpar whiskey this far into their their run. And the fact that it's like this of all years after COVID, when businesses are just like a lot of businesses are 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 you know like beginning to like really pick up again since COVID has quote unquote ended. Not really, but kinda. I think it, there's something else behind it. There has to be. I'm, 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 I'm a conspiracy theorist on this one. I'm a conspiracy theorist on this one. I think, I think Buffalo Trace is purposely holding it back to release it next year and make so much money on it. Like, not like they need more money, but they just had that like one billion dollar expansion. So they got someone's got to pay for it. It's a lot of whiskey to pay for that. Um, but yeah, let's let's score this bad boy. I'm thinking Elijah Craig Barrel Proof A119. I don't think it's my favorite barrel proof release, but it's still deserving of a very high score. Um, Lagavulin last week, I forgot what I gave it. I, I, 9.2, I think, maybe. Um, and I'm not comparing it to any of the other ones. I don't remember what I gave any other Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Uh, but right off the top, Everything considered, this is one of this is probably my favorite line of consistently released whiskeys is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof series that's readily available somewhat. Um, and I feel lucky that I have this bottle. But that being said, let me take one more sip. It's just good stuff. It's just good stuff. I'm like nine point one. Stamp that. It's there's not a huge, huge difference between this and like another Elijah Craig Barrel Proof Batch, I feel like. Like, if you if you see A119, oh, MSRP is supposed to MSRP is 60 bucks. I think I paid 70 bucks for this. Um, but I'm sure there's stores that charge $200 because it's a 2019 release, and obviously there's no more releases of this specific batch. Um, I mean, if you see this for like, I, I would pay 100 bucks for this, you know what I mean? Just because I'm a fan of the brand, I'm a fan of the Barrel Proof series that Elijah Craig puts out. Uh, I'm not like paying more than that, though. I'm not paying more than that. Um, like, I feel like B520 and C920 are both better than this, but I... A lot of these barrel proof batches are, are very similar. But there's subtle differences, and until maybe one of these episodes, we'll do a flight of every single barrel proof that I have Elijah Craig barrel proof that I have and we'll compare each and every one of them and get hammered maybe I'll do like a live on that or something I don't know but that's what I'm going to do 9.1 Elijah Craig barrel proof A119 um I think that's a deserving I think that's a deserving uh a deserving a deserving score so um I think I got everything out of the way that I wanted to talk to uh, you guys about this week. Um, oh, the Max Holloway fight. Shit. Max Holloway fought this past weekend, and he and Yair Rodriguez had an all-time brawl. But here's the problem with Max Holloway getting into another five-round war. is that He's 28, but in fighting years, he's probably like 40. He has the most significant strikes in the UFC history by a long shot. And the two that are closest behind him are Frankie Edgar and Cowboy Cerrone, each of which are probably going to retire soon. And Max Holloway is 28 years old. So, I mean, this guy, let's put it this way. If him and McGregor fight, if that's McGregor's next fight, I think that's a great fight for McGregor at lightweight. I think that is a very winnable fight. And my prediction would be a very devastating knockout by Conor McGregor. 
I think Max Holloway can't take that much punishment anymore. I mean, listen, I love Max Holloway. I love Max Holloway. He's one of my favorite fighters on the UFC roster, but if he really wants to fight Conor McGregor, it's, I, I mean, that would be a huge fight. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be at lightweight, and we saw what Dustin Poirier did to Max Holloway at lightweight, pieced him up, rocked him bad a few times, ended up winning a unanimous decision. But I don't think, I don't, if, if Max Holloway can't finish anybody at featherweight, consistently, I know he finished Jose Aldo and he finished a few other people, but I don't see him finishing Conor McGregor at lightweight. That's my prediction for Conor McGregor's next fight. I think he's going to fight Max Holloway. He's going to knock out Max Holloway, and then he's probably going to fight Dustin Poirier for the belt. That's my prediction. But, um, yeah, that's that's my prediction after this weekend's crazy fight. All respect to Yair Rodriguez as well. I wasn't a fan of him going into this fight because I thought he was a little bit of a pansy. But, um he came forward the entire fight, and he threw with Max Holloway, and he is for sure a top five featherweight in the world, no doubt about it. I want to see him fight Brian Ortega next. I would love that fight. Um, I don't think he. Sh- I, I think if he fought Alexander Vol- Volkanovski, I think he would get murdered. But, um, so I think Yair Rodriguez versus Brian Ortega is the next fight to make, and then. Um, uh, Max Holloway versus Conor McGregor, two. I think that's the two next fights for two of these great fighters that we saw fight this weekend. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to watch the Spider-Man trailer at 6.50, so another about another hour and a half, and I'm going to call the night. So um, listen, I, I appreciate you guys tuning in to another week of the show. This is episode 53. So we have over a year's worth of of weekly content now, and we're just going up. We're at, we're still at like the base level. You know when a roller coaster is going up, 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 up. We haven't even like taken off yet. Here, who gives a dram? We are. We haven't even like the the roller coaster. The roller coaster machine operator hasn't even pressed the the start button for the roller coaster to start going up. We're on the bottom level, 53 episodes in. This is not stopping. When we get to episode 1053, then maybe we can start talk about talk uh, talk about going that we're going up. A lot of cool things happening in the future. I appreciate everyone who reaches out. Uh, make sure you're subscribed on all platforms. That would really help me out a lot. Like and comment my uh, on my videos on YouTube, and make sure you're subscribed on there. We're at 80 subscribers right now. I want to try to get to 100. Um, and I, again, a lot of a lot of cool things coming down the pipeline. Potentially some new merch coming out soon. Um, potentially some collaborations coming out soon. Um, I've got a lot of a lot of cool things happening. And uh, the fact that each and every one of you guys tune in every week to listen to this is a um, I feel privileged that I have this platform to talk to y'all. So um, without getting too deep and emotional. Um, I'm going to finish this whiskey, and I'm going to let my brother Nick Bossy play me out What Happened to Country, available on all platforms. And always remember, you guys, whiskey's the water of life, so let's start living. My hands are tired from paying my bills Staring at a bottle, I'm aiming to kill the Weeks passing by and the seasons to change And I'm playing my song Trying to make me a name People say as they walk out the bar The kids go on places maybe even a star They don't play country Down in Nashville today Just the same chord progression With nothing to say What happened to country Three chords and the truth And who's gonna step up And fill their big shoes Writing songs about outlaws Singing all night And songs that'll make Grown man cry
They use auto-tune now down on Music Row Cause true country died there a long time ago No, they don't play Waylon on the boulevard But they'll do anything to be rock stars What happened to country? Three chords and the truth And who's gonna step up And fill their big shoes Writing songs about our loss Singing all night And songs that'll make A grown man cry But I do believe there is hope for us yet Cause there's millions of people who cannot forget The way Johnny Cash brought a tear to their eyes Or how Marty Robbins painted Texas skies What happened to country? Three cards and the truth And who's gonna step up? Fill their big shoes, writing songs about outlaws, singing all night, and songs that'll make a grown man cry. A grown man cry. A grown man cry. I won't let country die.